<laughs> All right, it's like, it's like, gee, many Christmas. What is the guy to do? Holy smokes, two o'clock. What's taking this long? Should be one. All right, four hours of recovery. Golly. <laughs> <laughs> What's it? Right from the, you know what he was in the hospital room, probably just saying, hey, you know what, no problem, we got you, we got you squared away. You're you're activated. Go write a contract. See. <laughs> I actually did answer a few in them. What's that? I, I answered a few in the recovery room, so if it was a little weird. Yeah, right. Exactly. He was like, yeah, no problem. Just make sure you get all the all the contract initialed. And boy, Mickey Mouse is on the ceiling. <laughs> hey, Chris. Don't worry, man. Um, it's uh, and Mickey Mouse is and what's that and then don't forget to initial page eight and then you know kind of going back and forth. <laughs> that is funny. That's too good. Well, awesome. Well, everybody again, ha happy Halloween. Everybody's good. November first is kind of unique. We usually have a little lighter turnout when the first Tuesday of the month is the first because tends to put people in a little bit of a funk. You know, actually worked out well for us because normally this is our room. This is our favorite four-letter F word room, right? This is free. All right, the, 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 the free room that we get. And November, we usually have to try and do something a little creative because this is a polling place, and usually the first Tuesday of the month. But, but what's, the, what's the law? The, I guess if the first Tuesday of the month is the first, then they make it the second Tuesday as election day? Is that the, you know? Because usually it's the first Tuesday as election day. So maybe they figured people would be a little uh, too uh, disheveled after Halloween. Exactly. What's that? Just wanted to sell ads. Yeah, they, yeah, you know what? Exactly. You know, it's good news. You know, being in Tennessee, I don't get the uh, I don't get ads as much as you guys get here. I come down here and I get inundated because uh, Tennessee's not a swing state, so it, you know we're we're pretty uh, uh, inoculated from that. So uh, I actually you say, the car ads. what's that? I actually missed the car ads. See, exactly. All right. Are they being replaced? But you know what? Everybody should feel healthier, at least through them, because now you're getting all the ads that tell you you've got this disease and this one and you should be suing this person. All those ads are, are being replaced by, you know, this other person's a jerk and this person's a jerk, you know, whatever uh, going on. But at least you should feel better about yourself, because every time I turn on the TV, it's like, oh, maybe I do have that. You know what? <laughs> Crohn's disease? I've never heard of Crohn's. I better tell Google that. What, what's Crohn's? Oh, I might have that. What's that rash? I might, oh, you know what? Talk yourself into all sorts of diseases you didn't know you had. So, um, and we can join a class action lawsuit to go sue whoever did it back in, you know, the 1850s or whoever was responsible for all that. So, anyway, um, I digress and I do that quickly around here. So, we'll keep, my, keep myself on track. All right, let's go around. Jerry, you got something. First of all, let's we get this out of the way. Uh, we have a, our holiday party. Yep. It's December 6th, which is the same day as our December office meeting. So it's the Tuesday morning we'll be at an office meeting. The first Tuesday of December is going to be our holiday party. Gotcha. And it's going to be from 1 to 4 at Wentworth Country Club. Wentworth Country same Club. Same place as last year. Yep. We serve lunch, dessert, all the goodies. So, oh, but we do have... Uh, a new thing this year we're going to do, admission to the party is a non-perishable food item or a toy for Metropolitan Ministries. Right. So we're going to have bins there set out so when y'all come, if you would bring something for Metropolitan Ministries so we can pass it along. And we'll be communicating this uh, out to you uh, regarding that. But uh, yeah, so we, we figured we, we could do that as well. Um, and by the way, it's open house style, so you know, come at one and stay till four, right? Close the place down like Michelle would do, all right? Or, um, you know, come at 2.38 and leave at 2.41, all right? Okay, it's a totally up to you, all right? It's a, there's no pressure to be there. I warn you, though, if you're really hungry, don't come at 3.30, because last year, by 3 o'clock, boom, man, our food was Yeah, you guys gone. can eat, man. You can just put your feed bag on, I'm telling you, man. Put that favorite four-letter word in front of food now, right? Now we got four... Two four-letter F words, free food. Now look out, okay? And then Katie bar the door. So yeah, we'd love to have you. It's always a great time. Um, you'll get to meet some of our, uh, you know, we just went over a thousand agents now. So, but you'll get to meet if you come to the holiday party. The the ones who are the single-digit agents, they love to wear they they wear that as a badge of honor. Now, our first Christmas party was in Bob's living room, back in the day. I was one of there were seven of us, all right, and that included Bob and his wife and their, his little boy. So that was three of them, all right. So, <laughs> so uh, but they love to tell the stories about how they were around back in the day. So, um, but it should be a good time. Always is a good time. Our vendors are always a, there's a 
uh, open bar, but our vendors always sell drink tickets. Uh, fr uh, fr food is free. We have uh, uh, food, uh, drink and wine, and all that kind of stuff is there. So it's always a good time to catch up with everybody. Get a chance to meet some people you probably don't get a chance to see. Okay. What's that? All the admin. admin team will be there. The people that these, these, you know, Maureen, the wizard behind the curtain that releases your DAs. All right, the all important Maureen that, it, 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 you know, gives you the blessing to get paid. All that stuff is, is uh, uh, very important as, as you come along. So, um, so we get that. And Jerry, speaking of that, so Jerry, uh, that's why I wanted to talk, touch on that first, because Jerry's get real involved with Metropolitan Ministries and got something going on. We got a couple days that we want to need to fill up as well, right? Yes. Okay, you. perfect. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Jerry Papa. For those of you, since this group keeps growing and growing, it's a good thing, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, I want to introduce myself, Jerry Papa. I'm the broker owner of Gulfview Realty Property Management. We provide professional property and lease management services throughout Tampa Bay. Uh, no, we're not your competitor, even though we're in your office. We complement your service. Uh, we're an advocate for your business. We pay referral fees uh, by way of Maureen and Future Home Realty every day. In addition to that, we promise never to steal your customer. When your customer wants to buy or sell real estate, they uh, go back to you. And if they buy a property that needs management again, we hope that you bring them back to us. Uh, we use a software cloud, so everything is systemic and driven that way. Folks pay their rent through the cloud. We disperse through the cloud and uh, everything. Um, works very timely through that process. Now what we want to talk about also today is our annual Metropolitan Ministries assistance at the Big Tent. How many here have ever been to the Metropolitan Ministries Big Tent? Uh, you walk away from helping people in many different walks of life feeling warm and fuzzy for what you did. And for those that have joined us before or have gone on their own to go to Metropolitan Ministries, I thank you for your service. Uh, and our two dates for 2016 are Monday, November the 21st uh, for the Thanksgiving holiday from um, 11 to 1.45. And on Friday, December 16th is our Christmas at 1.15 to 4 p.m. Uh, and I've committed to a total between Golf U Realty Property Management, our vendors, and Future Home Realty, to 20 people, which should each be a, each, for each right. of those. Perfect. And it should be a very achievable goal. Sure. And again, for anyone who hasn't done this before, when you go to the big tent, and you go to the registration, you go through orientation, then they start to announce where they need help, whether it be in the food service area, whether it be in the shopping area, whether it be in the toy uh, fulfillment area or the toy shopping area with the with the parents etc uh, could be slinging turkeys you could be uh, making fruit baskets you could be doing a lot of different things so you get to pick what you want to do uh, and it's a fun event and you really do come away feeling really great uh, I'm going to pass around here in just a moment um, the uh, sign up and we will have the sign up at the office and if anyone likes, would like more information, either stop to see me or send me an email. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. And then we'll also make sure we follow up with an email so you guys have that information as well. Keep an eye out. It's a great time. You know what I mean? And we should be, you know, it's always a good time to give back. It's kind of one of our uh, core values is giving anyway, right? And so paying it forward, we call it. And so let's, uh, let's, let's work on doing that. So that's a great time to, uh, to do that. And thank you, Jerry, for uh, arranging that. So who else we got? Brian. Hi. What do you got? What do you got for us? By the way, just we go around our vendors. Our vendors get about two and a half, three minutes just to tell us about what they've got going on. I'll probably come warranty. I usually don't take that, that two or three minutes. But anyway, um, with the old public home warranty. Uh, interesting, interesting thing happened to me yesterday. So one of the realtors said, I was out in an office and said to me, he said, well, you know, we use a different company because these guys are all the same. <laughs> and I kind of looked at her and I went, well, does that mean I should hire the realtor that I can pay 25 bucks for put my stuff without my license or all the same? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> she opened that way. Oh. She was taken back a little bit, and I was like, you know, we are different. The, the plans are different. The service is different. Everything's different. So, you know, they're not the same. Just because they're less money doesn't mean they're, you know, uh, it's really about coverage. I tell people all the time, it's really not about price. It's about coverage. It's about what you spend and what kind of coverage you get for your money. And 
the one thing I can guarantee you that if you spend money with the Republic, you'll get the best coverage for the money you're gonna spend. So that's what I promise. Um, the other thing is there's a piece of candy corn here if you like it, Bob. Oh, you know, holy cow, where's that been? Yeah. You know, I never missed it. And I also, I dropped off some calendars on you guys. If anybody needs more, I've got more. Or if you don't want it, that's okay, too. It won't offend me. But anyway, um, <laughs> You're unoffendable. I have calendars. All right. so thank you very much. And look awesome. forward to the Christmas party. Brian Browns with uh, Old, Old uh, Republic uh, Home Warranties. Again, we put bring a buffet. All right, your choice. We allow them to just kind of tell you what they do. But Brian's a great guy. Always brings value uh, to the table. So that's, that's awesome. All right, our home stager. How are you? <laughs> Good morning, Bob. Good. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Liliana War with Show Home Stampa. We help you grow your business. So either you are a buyer agent or listing agent, we make you sell the house faster for more money, or if you're the buyer agent, you get you more referrals because that buyers will be so excited about our product. So call us anytime and we will help you to be more successful. Thank you. Awesome, great, thank you. Any other vendors around here? Vendors, vendors, nope, nope, good. Our title and mortgage got worn out, that's good. David, we'll come back to you, is that all right? All right. Okay, very good. David, we got our uh, resident attorney in the house, so uh, are we here yet? We just yes. walking in? All right, perfect, awesome, good deal. Jim, Maureen, you guys got anything before we roll on? Maureen left, anything? Get your HUDs into paperless pipeline after closing. HUDs into paperless pipeline after closing, right? So uh, remember, we don't need the HUD. We just need it scanned into the... Scanned and put in. Okay, perfect. And please make sure your check for $250 is sent in within two business days of closing. Please don't make me hunt you down. I hunt down them 30, 60, 90 days after closing, constantly looking for... They get stuck in your folder. You forget to mail them. Please put... Them whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Let's get honest, all right? Okay. When the whole $6,000 check was made out to Future Home Realty, all right, you couldn't get to the office fast enough to turn that check in, all right? When you got your $5,750 and our little piddly two fifties kind of lying around, all right, trust me, we get them. There's coffee stains. It's been under my car seat for three weeks. Oh, Bob, I forgot about that, you know. Um, remember this, that DAs, all right, are a privilege and not a right. Okay, and we always can revoke habitual offenders, all right? We reserve the right to reopen our uh, uh, investigation into the, I'm just kidding, all right, all right. Okay, we reserve the right that we can revoke, all right, the, uh, the, the privilege of getting a DA, because once again, if we didn't give you your check, if we didn't allow the title company to pay you at closing, I, trust me, the whole check would show up fast. Right, so, and I get that, and trust me, one of the things, one of the, the, the reasons we like doing this, A, it's easier for us, easier for you, you like getting paid at closing, no delay, and you know, once it closes, and you've already waited 45 days for this thing, I, I get the whole concept, let's just make sure we're team working this thing. Fair enough, yes ma'am. And lately I've been having just the title company send it in. It's easiest, right? And Save yourself the stamp. Hey guys, that's cool, we love that too. Watch your transactions, when I move it to close, and that means I got your money, the 250, it'll disappear from your transactions and paperless. If you see that it's still hanging out there, that means we didn't get your money because I move it to close and it disappears once, you, once our monies are received. Fair so enough. Just watch your transactions and paperless. If you see something's been closed a long time and it's still hanging out there, you need to do some investigating. It could be that I, I erred by not moving it, but call me. Text me, email me, do something to find out why is it closed out. Because that means we didn't get the money. Fair enough. Yep. Cool. Awesome. People continue to cap, I mean, we're up to, I mean, it's amazing. Because remember, we're January 1 through December 31st is our capping time. And remember, we cap not on dollar volume, but on transactions, right? So I, I counted up yesterday, we're north of 75, something close to, close, about 75 agents so far that have capped. Continue to do that, right? Get to that point. By the way, we have our cappers luncheon in February for all those that had capped throughout this uh, current year. So if you're close, push to get that done. That'd be awesome. We'd love to see you there. All right, yeah. fair enough. You guys ready? Yeah. All right, awesome. You got a flash drive, right? Yeah. What's your first name? Scott. Scott. All right. Good to meet you. Scott, an old friend of mine, Scott. Yeah, it's been way back. <laughs> way back. <laughs> at least, uh, at least a couple hours. Exactly. Right? At least that, wait, wait, wait. You got to show him the flash all right. drive. All right. Okay. This is embarrassing. He's I got lost. Wonder Woman. I've lost so many of these things over the years. So one of my salespeople gave me this. Nice. He said, you'll never lose this one again, I promise. See, he's going to make Every sure. Every time I leave it in the computer, everybody's like, no, 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 that's Scott. So <laughs> I, I, I've had it 
right now a year and a half lost. It. See, so there you go. Awesome. I was tired of losing presentations and thumb drives. <laughs> Hold that. This is we're we're yeah. all over the web. Yeah. So it's not a broad. It's not a microphone. But There's some just, other agents, yeah, just, yeah, some yeah, other exactly. places. It's fantastic. So let me find this for you and get you all squared away. Yeah, I'll just do it like that. And it's the one that's the, uh, the chronologically the most recent one. I guess that's at the. 17? Uh, uh, yeah. Sarasota Realtor, Tampa uh, Realtor. The, uh, no, it's the Tampa one, the most oh, recent okay. Tampa. This one. I actually don't think, I don't think that was the most recent, no. No? We can go back. Yeah, go back. Uh, so just do the date modified. That was oh, how I'm sorry. Do it. Yeah. 10, 18, 11, 15. Tampa, uh, right there. Tampa right there, go 10-6, 16, perfect. Good, perfect, that's it. Perfect. And as long as my cell, yep, that's it. All right. All right. And I'll get you a, um, a plug in a clicker for you Oh, fantastic. Yeah, we're full service around. Yeah, I guess, you, this see. is awesome. You, you uh, for all this, you could charge more. I know, oh, you hear that more? <laughs> <laughs> this is a bargain. I All right, thank you, you so right, much. Hey, good morning, everybody. Thank you so very much. I appreciate you being patient. Uh, my name is Scott Eckley, and that is my cell phone number. I'm Vice President of Sales and Marketing for D.R. Horton, Tampa, Sarasota. I start the slide with my cell phone, and I end it as well, because I want you to be able to contact me directly if you ever have an issue or a challenge, if there's an obstacle I can get out of your way so we can sell a home and create a win-win situation that's what we're all about. This is Erica Delgado. Uh, Erica's gonna, I'm gonna talk about her in a little bit in the, in the amazing role that she plays in our organization, but we're always here and available for you. Uh, real quickly, how many people have heard of DR Horton before? Just raise your hand. All right, fantastic. I always ask this question. There's so many people coming into general real estate, I think on a weekly basis, so many new people, and I've done this presentation, and people are like, who's Dr. Horton? Does this have, does this have something to do with our health care benefits? And like, no, no, we are, we're actually America's number one home builder. We've been, uh, and we've been doing this now 14 years in a row where we've been number one. This has never happened in the history of the United States where we've had one builder, both in terms of sign-ups and closings, been number one. I always say there's a lot of uh, builders who spend more on TV and radio and billboards. Uh, we sponsor a lot of these types of events. We buy a lot of breakfasts. Uh, the realtors are truly the lifeblood of our organization. I'll share some data with you here in just a second, but uh, I thank you so much for what you do. I've never been in general real estate. I've been on uh, this side of the fence, new home sales for 15 years, and I have such respect for what you do because I know it's a, a job where the phone rings at 7 a.m., 10 p.m., everywhere in between seven days a week. So God bless you and thank you all the work you do. Uh, for those people who like information and data, uh, this is the new home builders on a national basis. So on a national basis, uh, DR, DHI, that's DHI, Horton, we closed 37,700 homes last year. Uh, Lennar, you've probably heard of them in this market, they're our biggest competitor. On a nationwide basis, they closed 24,000 homes. PHM is Pulte Homes, 17, you see the drop off. NVR and then CAA is Cal Atlantic. Uh, Ryland and uh, Standard Pacific merged became Cal Atlantic. So those are the big five in the, in the new home building business. What's interesting is the gap between us and Lennar, about 52%. We closed 52% more homes than they did. Uh, this is last year, the year prior was only about 40% and the year before that was only 30%. So the gap's actually expanding and I wanna show you why here in a second. I know we have an election here in about a week. This is not one of those Republican Democrat <laughs> things, I promise. Uh, uh, yeah, no. Uh, I think Trump would probably like it if this is how it looked, but I don't. I don't think this is how it's going to look. Uh, but this is no where we're doing business. So there's 27 states, 79 markets, and this area right here we're really expanding, and that's why I'm here today. I want to tell you more. Uh, these are the local numbers for DR Horton here in Tampa. So we've had a really nice run. Uh, in 2012, you can see we sold 409 homes, then 576, 685. Our goal in 2015 was 815. We ended the year at 100, 1,118. So we really it was a to get back over a thousand was really great. We hadn't ever done that before. Uh, and this year it's going to be over 1,200. And when I tell you the realtors are the lifeblood of our organization, uh, of that 1,118 sales, uh, we had the privilege of paying a co-broke on 82% of them. 82% of our sales came from someone like yourself, a realtor. And uh, so thank you, thank you, thank you, and God bless you for all you do. So, And we want to do more and more and more. Uh, why the growth? What's going on? I asked if you raised your hand if you heard of DR Horton. How many people have heard of Express or Express Homes? Yeah, a lot less. Okay, so here's the tool I can put in your toolbox today. Uh, the buyer that's struggling, the underserved buyer, is the price and payment sensitive buyer. Uh, we all should have bought homes or uh, investment property three years ago because prices, as you know, have gone up quite a bit in the last two, three years. 
years. And I'm, there are an ocean of people in apartments, living with mom and dad, whatever the situation might be. They're not crazy about it. They'd love to buy a home. They'd love to own, but they don't think they can afford it. Uh, our Express brand of homes is designed specifically for those price and payment sensitive buyers. So in our Express communities, uh, washer, dryer, refrigerators, and blinds are always included. And we always include, uh, if you use our DHI mortgage, our 8,500 in closing costs. So essentially, you can buy a home. You don't have to worry about the washer, dryer, refrigerator blinds. You don't have to worry about closing costs. We're going to cover those. And our average price point in the Tampa market, depending on where you go, is right around 200, 205,000. We have some communities where the prices for single family detached start in the 150s. But right here in the Tampa area is about 200,000, 205,000. Uh, it's not one of those situations where I like, you know, these floors, these countertops, these cabinets. We do packages. Packages look great, feel great. We've got the white, white cabinets. We've got the dark espresso and three in between. Uh, that's one of the things we do to keep the prices down. Uh, in only one of the communities do we have a CDD. Most of the time we have an HOA, and that HOA is usually around $60, $70 a month because if you don't have an HOA, a community can get out of control very quickly. But everything we do with Express is to keep your price and payment as low as possible. I'll talk about some specifics, but go ahead, yeah, please. Where are the locations of these houses? Are they uh, in yeah, look, I'll get to that in a few slides, but that's always the, the great question. Uh, but uh, Express is for that price and payment sensor buyer. Our next brand is our DR Horton brand, our traditional brand. For more of the move up, more bells and whistles, more optionality. Um, and with those bells and whistles and optionality uh, come higher price points. But that's okay because sometimes we have buyers that have the discretionary income and they're okay. But uh, you're going to find uh, CDDs in uh, about 70% of our DR Horton branded communities. Um, and again, I'll show you where those can be found as well, but DR Horton's going to be more of the move up. And then we have our luxury, which is our Emerald brand. Uh, you're going to find Emerald exclusively in South Tampa, that area between Gandy and Kennedy. It's kind of a hot area. There's no rod land left down there. Basically, you're buying a 70-year-old uh, a home for $200,000. You're tearing it down, and you're building an $800,000 home. Uh, and in that area, we've got uh, three inventory homes on the ground. And over the course of the next 12 months, we're going to be building another, another five or six. So uh, that's our Emerald brand, which is our luxury. And then the fourth brand that I want to roll out and let you know about is our our freedom homes. Uh, we want to do for active adult what we did with Express. Um, there's a couple builders who do active adult. Uh, the big one everybody thinks of is Dell Web. And Dell Webs are great communities and look great. But you know, in a lot of those Dell Web communities, the prices can get into the 300s very quickly. Uh, the lot premiums tend to be very high. And then they, they do an amazing lifestyle where sometimes they'll put in that 50,000 square foot amenity. But when you have that amenity and all that lifestyle, it ends up in your monthly HOAs. Uh, we want to have affordable active adult where we keep the monthlies uh, you know, sub 200 a month. So they're going to be maintenance free, but they're going to be sub 200 a month. Um, we're going to roll out four freedom communities uh, in 2017. Uh, one of the first ones we're going to roll out is how many people here have heard of uh, uh, Epperson or Epperson Ranch? OK, how many people have heard of that community is going to have the seven acre uh, lagoon swimming pool? OK, that's Epperson, OK? Yeah, everybody knows the Lagoon Swimming Pool. People don't know the name. So Epperson's right there off. And I'll have it a little bit later here. Uh, if you take Curly Road, uh, go north, and it'll be on your left-hand side right across the street from uh, uh, Watergrass. Uh, that's going to be Epperson. It's going to be opening up. Uh, we're going to be in there with our Express in March of uh, next year. And the active adult will happen probably three or four months later. It's going to be a very neat community. It's the first community in the United States that's going to have one of those lag Lagoon Swimming Pools. Uh, I was reading about a month or so ago, I don't know if anybody's been out to Vegas, the Wynn Hotel. They're going to actually take nine holes of the golf course, tear up the golf course, and put in one of those swimming pools because they think that's a better deal than the golf course. So it's, it's a pretty big deal. And the first one in the United States is going to be here in Tampa. And that community, Epperson, is going to be opening up in March. And we'll be in there. So uh, we're going to have all four brands. So our idea is with those four brands, it really doesn't matter what your buyer's needs, wants, their demographics. We're going to have a community. We're going to have a home. We're going to have a price point to fit all those buyers' needs. So you can always go to our website, drhorton.com, drhorton.com. Uh, you type in Tampa, hit Enter. All of the map will pop up. It'll have all of our brands on it. So you can always find where any of those communities are, the Express, the Horton, the Emerald, and the Freedom. So that's on our website. Uh, and you know what? I'm going to actually fly through a few of these here real quickly just to, uh, um, well, I'll do it this way. So uh, because you asked about Express. Um, if you go, if you're willing to drive to Spring Hill, a lot of people take that veterans up. It's an easy drive to get to Spring Hill. We actually have two express communities, Bristol Place and Sterling Hill. You can see prices start in the 150s and the 160s. Uh, it's always interesting to me how many people will get a McDill who 
they're okay going up there because the, the lots themselves are oversized. You know, they're not only the 50 wide, but a lot of them are 120, 130 deep. They're really pretty. Uh, and again, you're buying homes. You can buy the big ones, the four bedrooms, the master up for uh, 160s, 170s, uh, which is a really good value. Um, it's hard to find that anywhere else. But you can find those two express communities up there. Uh, down in that Riverview corridor, we've got two uh, D.R. Horton branded communities, Park Creek and Riverview Meadows. But also in that area, we've got three express communities. Uh, real quickly, Copper Creek. I really believe Copper Creek is one of the best values anywhere in Tampa. It's a townhome community, so it's three bedroom, two and a half bath townhomes. None of the buildings are back to back. You either are looking over a water view or you're back on the conservation. But your three bedrooms, two bath, it's gated, there's a community pool, and you're from the 160s. That's really. What's the association there, do you know? Yeah. 125? Yeah, it's 125 a month. With gated and everything? Gated and pool, yes. Yeah, it's really great. It's really great. So we've been selling, we've been averaging about six, seven, eight sales a month, but it's always, a, I do these presentations and I'll meet a group of uh, 20 realtors and 17 have never heard of Copper Creek. So it's right down there. There's Big Bend and it's, it's weird and the bullfrog is, it runs parallel to 75. There's a little street here you got to take and, it, and there's a brand new YMCA that they built right there. So I don't know if you know that area or not, but it's right there, it's hard to miss, but it's one of the best values anywhere. So if you have a buyer that's looking townhomes, again, they're looking for that affordability, Copper Creek. Uh, and then uh, Hawks Landing is another one. It's almost at the corner of I-4 and 75. Really great location. This is Express Single Family Detached. Average price point in the community is right around 220. Um, and uh, no CDD there, so your monthly is like 50 or $60 a month. Um, and we've got lots of inventory there. Um, and then Osprey Lakes just opened up uh, last month. So uh, if you kind of take Falkenberg till it dead ends, uh, Spoto High School is going to be there on your left hand side. It's literally just uh, about uh, an eighth of a mile from Spoto High School. We have townhomes, again, in that location from the 170s. Uh, so it's a really good value and uh, that would be on our express side. Um, we have inventory. A lot of builders, uh, they, they say, yeah, we have inventory. You go out there, there's one or two or three. We know that a lot of buyers uh, don't or aren't able to wait five, six, seven months for a home to be built. Our goal in every community at all times is to have at least 10 inventory homes. And as soon as we sell one, we start another one. So when you come out to the community, you're going to have inventory. And I'd like to introduce Erica real quickly. She can talk about herself and her role. But uh, that's her phone number. Sometimes it's nice to talk to a live human being. What's great is you can call Erica and say, uh, you know, not only can you say, hey, I got a client that's looking for this location, this price point, this type of home, not only will she answer your questions for you, but she will register your clients for you over the phone. Nice. And this is a very big deal. I get a call at least once a month from a realtor, and it goes something like this. Hey, Scott, I've been working with Mr. and Mrs. Jones for the last six months. They went wandering off on their own. They bought one of your homes. They didn't, I wasn't with them, and they didn't mention me. Can you help me out and put me on the deal? Because I've driven them around for six months and spent a countless hours. I always want to take care of the realtors. We try our very best. That's always a little bit of a difficult conversation. If you call Erica, uh, and she can, again, register your clients for you over the phone. So if they show up in one of our communities and buy a home, what do we do? Then for the realtor. We pay, them. we pay the realtor. That's exactly right. <laughs> we pay them a lot of money. Yeah, and why don't you real quickly talk about uh, some of the uh, opportunities we have here in, uh, in Pinellas as well? Sure. So in uh, Pinellas, it wasn't on the slide, but we have. Oh, because yeah, yeah. oh I'm so sorry, you're right. Online. Well, one mic group. One mic group. That's okay. That's, That's okay. okay. I'll do this. This is good. Um, so in Pinellas County, we actually have two communities, which it's hard to find in Pinellas New Construction. We have townhome, a townhome community called the Colonnade. It's on 4th and 53rd. It's eight minutes to downtown. It's 15, 20 minutes to South Tampa. So it's a really great location. They start in uh, right around 300. And then we also have a, a single family, little uh, small cul-de-sac of 15 homes in Pinellas Park, um, starting in the upper 300s, right around 400. And we have a total of 15 homes there. And I think we've sold about six or seven. So there's still opportunity there. Um, and we're just, we're opening up new communities all the time. So I'm um, kind of like your one-stop shop. If you have a buyer, 
and you're not sure where to bring them, you could always call, email, or text me. Hey, I have a buyer looking for this. Do you have anything that meets their needs? I'd be happy to point you in the right direction. Helps you narrow down the search. I came from uh, general real estate for 14 years, so I completely understand <laughs> how that goes and also how they go out and wander without you. So again, email, call, text uh, your buyers, and all I need is their name to register them under you. So we'd like to protect you quite a bit. And we have a huge promotion going on in November that we definitely want to let you know about. So for a DR Horton Homes, we are paying 6% instead of 4% on all inventory homes. And Express, we're paying 5% instead of 3 for all inventory homes. So take advantage of November because this is huge. And an extra $1,000 bonus on inventory homes. So you're gonna make, if it, closes if it closes this year. So if we have an inventory home that's ready that can close by the end of the year, then that's an extra $1,000 in your pocket. On top of the six per, five or 6%. Yeah. On top of the five and 6%. So you definitely wanna bring your buyers to us all month long and then you'll see how great it is to work with DR Horton and you'll just keep bringing them. So, and one thing yeah. Eric didn't mention is we actually have a, uh, our first express community is our first express community is going to be coming to uh, uh, kind of the greater St. Pete area in March, April of this year as well. Uh, we're just finalizing pricing and uh, we haven't even finalized the name of the community. We're working on that as well. So we're excited. We're going to have express in uh, St. Pete, which will be kind of a big deal for us as well too. So that's coming. Uh, if you have a client that's USAA, uh, they're a preferred vendor of ours. Whatever incentives we have, we don't discriminate. Uh, we don't take anything away if they're using USA versus DR Horton. And these are our base commission rates, uh, as Erica talked about. So normally in our Horton brand, we pay 4%. With Express, where we keep the price a little bit low, it's the 3%. And then the Emerald Luxury is 4%. But as she mentioned, uh, on any inventory home, uh, anything that's started that you sell in the month of November, we're paying 6% for DR Horton brand and 6% for Emerald, and we're paying 5% uh, with the Express, which is a big deal. And even if you buy a to-be-built, oh, by the way, we're paying an extra 1% on top of our normals. So we want to make it a big November for us. This is, a, uh, we're early in the year for us as a, as a corporation, our fiscal year, and we want to get off to a very fast start. And then uh, our last but not least, I want to talk about our bonus program. Um, so uh, I know we're getting late in the year, but it, it, it really goes like this. You sell one home, you're going to be in the money, because in the second sale, you get your base commission rates plus $1,000. Uh, on your third and fourth sales, you get your base commission rates plus an extra $1,500. But what's great is this. If you can sell five homes, and that's all brands combined over the course of the year, you'll earn an extra 1%. And then what's great is this. So um, last year, we had 12 realtors in the greater Tampa area who, who sold five or more. We rolled out this VIP program in January. This year, we're going to have 35 or 40 realtors who sold five or more. So not only would those 35 or 40 get an extra 1% on everything for the remainder of this year, but because they sold five in a year on January 1 of 2017 and all of 2017, they get the extra 1%. And then for even for like this incentive we're doing where we're paying 6%, they get the extra 1% on top of the 6%. Yeah, so I mean, it's really possible to earn seven, five, six, seven percent uh, co-brokes with us, and that's, that's quite frankly, it's like selling two homes at once. And one of the things we also do, there's builders who will pay, they only wanna pay 3%, and they only wanna pay 3% on the base price, we pay in the final sales price. So if they get a nice lot, and they put a pool on it, and they do another 30,000, 40,000 options, it's the commission on the final sales price, not just the base price. Yeah, wow, that's a big deal, wow. There's more. There's, and there's more. <laughs> Actually, there isn't more. That is the last slide. I'll let you into that. But wait, I, I try to end on a wow. So thank you very much. I got a wow to end on. Uh, the one thing I do want to end on is just thank you again so much. Uh, I, I, I know how challenging your job can be. I know it can be really rewarding as well, but it's seven days a week. Uh, there is my, mo my phone number, there's my mobile. If you need me for anything, we've got our on-site agents, we've got Erica, but I want you to have access to me as well. I'm really good about texting. Uh, I get a lot of phone calls on a daily basis and I drive and I text at the same time. I know I shouldn't do that. But if you wanna get a hold of me, you can text me and uh, I wanna make sure I can remove some obstacles so we can sell some homes together. Yeah, please. Do you have any uh, Freedom Home developments going into Bradenton, Sarasota? We do. Um, we've got... Um, We've got, uh, the, we have one that's gonna be, the, the only challenges are gonna open up probably are gonna be on September, October of next year. 
But yes, we have one that's going to be about five minutes, ten minutes, uh, less than ten minutes away from Lakewood Ranch, which we're really excited about. Uh, it'll be, it'll have proximity to Lakewood Ranch, and you'll be able to use all the the restaurants and the whatnot, but you won't have the CDD that you have with uh, Lakewood Ranch. Okay, because of course that's where Del Webb is. And exactly. Yeah. And um, next fall. Yeah. Yeah, typically we roll out, every, you know, um, uh, I want to make sure we have pricing every firm up, but we typically do an e-blast about uh, 30 days prior to any new community opening up. So uh, uh, we, again, right now on our calendar for 2017, uh, we've got four communities, four freedoms that are going to open up. Uh, one will be in, um, uh, will be Epperson, which will probably be April, May, and then the other three will be September, October, November of next year. Awesome. Yeah, anything else? Oh, yeah. Well online. Yeah. Um, question: Somebody who's, I guess, was selling in your recent South Tampa one, and was wondering there was an issue with mold and stuff. And you guys know about that, or can you speak to that? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to end on the wow. Yeah, I wanted to end on the wow instead. No, I mean, look, uh, he, here's the, I, I, don't, I don't know the specifics of that, but, but all, all I would say is this. Um, you know, we're the nation's largest home builder. Uh, DR, there actually is a DR Horton. He was in town uh, uh, about two months ago. Um, he's, he's not, no. Uh, Donald Ray. <laughs> Donald Ray Horton. Uh, so he, he takes this obviously very seriously. It's his name on the door. Uh, we, you know, with any new home, there's a new home warranty. We, we are absolutely 100% going to stand behind our homes. If there's an issue or a challenge or problem, we're going to fix it. We're going to take care of it. We're going to do, we're going to take care of our customers. And that's why, again, I'm out here. I want you to have my number. Uh, I'm not going away. I'm going to be here a long time. And, uh, you know, construction, you know, I, I wish building a home was done in the factory sometimes where it was controlled. and you know, uh, we had better control sometimes the trades, but uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit crazy sometimes out in the field, and I recognize that. And, and there is a trade challenge in our marketplace. The, the trade base hasn't recovered from the, the crash we had in 07, 08. Uh, they didn't come back like we wish they had. But uh, we're going to stand behind the homes. We'll fix it. And if there's an issue or challenge, I promise we're going to do the right thing. Awesome. Anything else? We'll get one more over there. Yeah. We, we, were, we, we were gonna, for a little while, we considered doing the Emerald on their lot, but we're just doing our communities now. And a lot of it, it's what I talked about a second ago, is the trade base. It's hard enough to get them to come out to our communities where we're building 10, 15, 20 homes at a time. To get them to go out to a home, it just, it's just, it's really difficult. It's real, and our trade base just isn't very good at that. That's, that's more of a, that kind of small custom builder. Last one. Yes, all of our homes are listed on MLS. So you'll find our homes on MLS, you'll find them on realtor.com, and we update everything. Uh, every week it's updated. So. And the phone number that's in MLS, it's an 866 number, that actually is me. It's not, you don't go to a different world, it's me. Yeah, yeah. We want you to have a relationship with Erica because again, she's gonna take care of you, and I wanna make sure you always get paid and we do the right thing for you, so yeah. She's online. online. Oh, yeah. Cover them all. Hernando down to Sarasota. Yep. It's a long. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's a lot of information. Erica's phone rings. She gets a lot of phone calls on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's great. And then you know the, the ability to, to you know call in and register a client. You know it's that's that's powerful. Yeah. So if I handed you the white pages. <laughs> said, hey, in case any of these people wrong brand, all right, yeah. I want to be covered. Am I, am I good there? All right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just do that. And and by the way, I always had you know for me, I had like um, you guys know the electronic dog fences. My buyers always wore warm. <laughs> yeah. So if they were wander into a building, they wander. They'd be like, oh, forget, I, I'm, not, I'm not so allowed to go in. What happened? I better call Bob. Yeah. Exactly. I better call so he can register me before I walk in. Awesome. Thank. You. Great information. Uh, website's probably the best, right? Yeah. Drhorton.com. It's all there. All right. Awesome. Great. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much. Let's not forget Wonder Woman. I never do. All right. There she is. All right. Great. That's wonderful stuff. All right. Good deal. Um, all right, David, you ready to come up? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do 12 minutes. Can we do it, David? We're going to discuss paragraph 8 of the financing contingency of the, of the FAR bar contract in 12 minutes. You ready? Okay. Which you guys, oh, yeah, but I, one time, I had a situation. All right. Let me tell you, we decided to go back. We've covered paragraph 8 
ad nauseum, all right? There's, I have a class on there uh, that's 45 minutes long talking about the 18 lines that are in paragraph eight, and it's loaded, right? But let me tell you an illustration, and I'll let David take over. All right. Yesterday, gonna, get a call. Are we going to tell him about the, the uh, paragraph eight incentive program? Yeah, right, exactly. You get a 1% bonus if you actually get paragraph eight right on your contract. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll double it. We'll, we'll cut your 250 in half if you actually know how to describe what paragraph eight really means <laughs> and how it affects your client. All right. Um, so yesterday, I get a call, you know, two days ago, I got a call from one of our agents who was representing the seller actually in, in absentia for one of our other agents, covering for another agent. Seller is upset with this buyer. We, we're coming to the end of the commitment period, loan commitment period, by the way, go to paragraph eight. We'll talk about that, right? It's all covered in there. Loan commitment period's coming to the end. It was a 30-day loan commitment period. It's gonna end last night, essentially at midnight, 30, on the 31st, okay? Very good. Seller's upset with the buyer. They're a bunch of losers. I wanna cancel. Well, it's pretty clear in the contract, if you read it, that at the end of the commitment period, if, if, the, if the commitment has not been delivered, then either party may cancel this contract. It's very clear, right? Either party may cancel this contract. Well, we got inklings that the buyer was gonna say, well, if we can't deliver the commitment because if we deliver the commitment, um, well, here, here's the thing. The buyer wasn't aware of it. I said, well, we don't need to make the buyer aware of it. All right, that's not our job. The buyer has their own agent. They can make the buyer you know, aware of that they're coming to the end of the commitment period. If the seller wants to cancel, tell them to cancel. Well, this agent says, well, let me read a little further into that and says, what if then two days later they come back and say, no, I don't want to cancel. I'm willing to waive my financing contingency. I said, well, I don't think the contract allows you to do that. I think whoever gets, you know, it says either party may cancel and boom, seller, you know, exercise their right under that to cancel. But I also made it clear that unless we had a fully executed agreement on the cancellation, that we're not putting it back to active in the MLS. We're not gonna sell the house twice, all right? Because I don't wanna get in the middle of a legal battle. Now, up until the closing date, once the closing date comes and goes, then the contract is now null and void, and we can then go ahead and market the property, and we can fight over escrow and all that stuff later. But every clear on that, unless you have a cancellation in writing, signed by both parties, you may not, okay, reactivate that property and say, oh, well, they wanted to cancel. The buyer sent me something they wanted to cancel. I don't care if you represent the seller, buyer wants to cancel, right? They send it, hey, look, I'm not happy with the uh, uh, home inspection. I'm gonna exercise my right under the terms of the uh, home inspection to, to cancel the contract. If the seller has not signed that and agreed to what's gonna be done with that earnest money, okay, that escrow, then you do not have a canceled contract. Everybody clear with me on that? So just because the buyers indicated they want to cancel doesn't mean you can then reactivate, right? It's also a point to say, well, hey, look, because what could happen is at the end of the day, all right, the buyer says, well, I'm gonna lose my 5,000, you know, day before closing, I think I'll show up to closing. Now you've already sold it to somebody else, you got someone else showing up to closing, all right? So we cannot do that until we have a fully executed cancellation. Everybody clear on that, all right? So, David, this agent says, well, what if they come back and say, I want to then waive my financing contingency, so therefore does that nullify their seller's right to cancel under the terms of, I got my cancellation in after the commitment period was not met? You know, the uh, contract doesn't talk about uh, the, the, the race that, that could develop here, but the, uh, the, the way I interpret it is this, the first party to exercise the right and not, not just think about it, not hmm. just say about it, but deliver it in, in writing. So the more, the more you have that will confirm what it is that you've done. Okay, for, so the seller, we've got the, let's say it's a 45 day uh, financing period. So in the 46th day, if you're representing the seller <clears throat> and you give written notice that you are canceling because you've not received a notice and, and in the contract it doesn't talk about sending a copy of the, of, the, uh, of the loan commitment, just notice that you've received. So if you're on the buyer side, all you need, all you, all you need to do uh, after the 45th day to, you know, this, this race that develops, the first one to put something in writing in front of the other party or deliver uh, notice or either notice of, notice of waiving, notice that the buyer has received a loan commitment, or on the seller's side, the seller delivers written notice that the seller is canceling the contract. You want to make sure, number one, that you 
you know, have that conversation with your either your buyer or your seller. Hey, this is this is what's going to happen. It's going to get a little crazy in the next couple of days. We're we're getting to the end of the of the uh, financing contingency period, and we have to think this through. We have to make sure that okay, if you're the seller, do we want to we want to stick with these buyers because even though they don't have a loan commitment, they can say we're waiving the financing contingency and we're locked in with these people. All right. Quick sidebar right there. I'm not an attorney, but I have watched Law and Order, so I know what sidebar means, all right? Um, <laughs> by, delivering, by delivering the uh, commitment, loan commitment as a buyer, right? What does that do to your financing contingency? Gone. gone. You've done, once you've delivered the, finan the loan commitment, your financing contingency is gone. So, oh, I don't want to waive my financing contingency, but I want to deliver the loan commitment. Well, guess what you just did? You waived your financing contingency. Chris, you got a question? On this whole thing as far as giving notice, you send an email to the other agent. Right. You send an email, <laughs> who knows that they opened it, mm -hmm. I mean, unless you send something mm -hmm. to tell that yep. they opened it, because yep. you're saying, I never received it, or right. I haven't, I saw it, but I didn't open it. <laughs> yeah, I, I intentionally, I, I, yeah. So when is it delivered? Well, it is. Uh, I mean, what have you done? Your there's nothing, right, there's nothing definitive. Every, every time, I think, I think everybody who's here on a regular basis will know. When I talk about emails, what you want to do is send an email and get some kind of response, because it's an excellent point. If the other side claims, hey, we, I, I didn't get it, or hey, it got into the, the uh, clutter. We did two things, delivery receipt and red receipt, right? Because you can get a delivery receipt saying it's been delivered, and then a red receipt saying it's been read. So I think both would be ideal, right? Well, the more, the more proof you have that right. the, other, the other side received it, the better off the better off you're going to be what and about your strange husband's uh laptop you would do it i'm just kidding is it with or without photos okay yeah we, can't yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. we right. digress again no, no. okay uh. All right. sorry that, that was, that I, was I threw you off there that was the answer to that okay. question <laughs> are we ready for questions yeah okay, okay so okay here's the key though okay, great question chris because what is delivery right delivery means that the other party has received it and so you have to prove that that's been done. Anything you can do to do that mm -hmm. would be every aspect along the way. If it's that important, right, then, I mean, there's a reason. Anybody ever received a lawsuit? Okay, nobody's been a broker. Okay, guess, come live in my shoes for a while, all right? Okay, when you receive it, guess what? Maureen, when we get something at the office, all right, that's coming uh, in the form of a, a summons or a, a lawsuit or whatever, it's certified, we have to sign, we have dated, it's stamped, it's we know exactly. When I call David, David says, well, when, when, when were you served? And we look at that little page and front page and there it is, stamped, and say, okay, we were served on that, that, that date, right? And so with that in mind, all right, the more you can do to prove that you have done that, all right, it's, it's and so, hey, look, I need your confirmation back, you need reply back, just received, anything, you know, what's that? But if they don't, then I would sit there and say, hey, look, you know what? I haven't heard anything back from you. I need some confirmation here. I'm going to go drop it off at your office. I'm going to, you know, whatever you have to. Again, I know it's a pain, right? It's a pain until now it's, we have a defense because we've done our job. All right? It, it, it's just these sellers, in this case, who we represent, want to cancel. All right? That's their goal. They want to cancel this thing. They're upset with me because I said, hey, look, cancel it but we're not putting it back active until we get something signed by the other side acknowledging that it's canceled. Because at the end of the day, if they change their mind, yeah, but it's my right. I said, great, go get yourself an attorney, all right? And that attorney gets me a letter absolving us of anything and says, hey, look, we'll bear the brunt of the whole thing if you put it back active, all right? Then it's all on them and not on us. Then I'll say, hey, you know what? Per the instruction of your legal counsel, we'll put it back active, right? But up until that point, no. One other thing on the on the issue of notice that, that we just discussed, yeah. if you if you're talking with your seller or your buyer, and it just is absolutely positively you know you're worried about the other you know let's say you're on the buyer side and you worry about the seller doing something or vice versa, the the only way I mean if you send an email, and they claim didn't receive it, then you're in a you're in a swearing contest all right. The way, you know, really the safest thing is to go old school, which is you, you find out where the address, you know, who the broker is locally, and you hand deliver and have that receptionist sign acknowledging receipt. That would lay to rest the issue of, you know, I sent the email, you know, they haven't, they haven't responded, I don't know. Your client calls up and says, well, did it happen? Well, it, 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 
And it's a little bit like if the, the, the tree falls in the woods and no one's there, does it make a sound? <laughs> if you send an email and they don't acknowledge it or they don't admit that they got it, then really it, it hadn't done any good. So I would seriously consider going old school, put something in writing, have the receptionist acknowledge that they got it and keep a, keep a copy of it. So just having the receptionist get it, <coughs> even though the agent well, you know, how many how many times is the agent actually going to be in the office? I, ideally, the agent or the broker, but at least someone at the at the brokerage who acknowledges receiving it. It's a step up. The higher steps you can go, right? Ideally, you hey, you know what? Take it to the agent. Chris, you're the agent. I'm going to take it to you. Hey, you hold this up. I'm going to take a snap, a quick picture. All right. Okay, you got it. Okay, now we have <laughs> right. The more evidence we can get, the better. Brian. Good selfie. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Do it. We got a question over here. Because I would think that if you have agreement in a contract that you're going to get a loan and it falls through, you can actually change the terms of the agreement. You're talking about it falls through after the uh, contingency period? The right. Contingency? And can't the buyer say, well, no, I'm not going to take another form? Well, if, if the seller has not elected to cancel the contract and the, the financing, quote unquote, falls through, oh. if you have not delivered notice that you have a loan commitment, then that opportunity is available up until seven days before the closing. <laughs> However, if you have if you have uh, notified the other side that you have received a loan commitment, then <coughs> if it falls through, and it's, then uh, you cannot you cannot cancel. And once again, the a lot of people get excited about okay, we have a loan commitment. Well, good news, bad news. One is you you have a loan commitment, and the bad news is you have a loan commitment. Because if you give notice, if you give notice that you have a loan commitment and that company cannot come through, then you have to make sure that your buyer is aware that, hey, we're delivering notice and we're waiving our financing contingency. But if this company changes their mind, if they, for whatever reason, and you know you've, you've seen it because you've been in business long enough to know, lenders sometimes just say, well, you know, we're not going to fund this loan. And they're not, they're not really clear on exactly why they're doing that, but your buyer, you need to make, make absolutely certain your buyer knows that, hey, this is good news, but it's, always, it's also bad news, because if these people can't come through, then you've lost your deposit, all right? Your fate is in their hands, all right? There is a couple quick questions, and then we're, uh, we're already past, we're 11 minutes, so let's go back here real fast. So, are you saying that that we should give notice that the loan, uh, what I'm hearing and understanding is that if we give notice to the seller's agent that the buyer has a loan commitment mm -hmm. and it, and it, and so they give up their right, their, their loan. Financing contingency, uh-huh. Um, but if we get to that 45 day mark, we, is it better that we don't even say anything? And let it go. Here's, here's the thing. By the way, and we have a 45 plus minute dialogue on this. Jim, is it on our YouTube page? Is the. Yeah, whatever we've done, yeah. Okay, and wh where is the YouTube page? Uh, YouTube.com forward slash user forward slash FHR training. Is that somewhere on our website? It's somewhere. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube.com forward slash user forward slash FHR training. All right. We had a 45 minute class on this because here's, here's the reality. Okay. When you come up against a loan commitment, you've got a decision to make. All right. Your buyer has a decision to make. We've covered this a lot. Buyer has to choice two. A, I don't have a commitment. Let it ride. What happens? Either party may cancel the contract. Seller could say, hey, guess I'm now it's time I to go to the backup offer. Right, I got a cash buyer for 5,000 more. I was waiting for this day. Okay, it's now 12.01. We're canceling, by the way, we're going with the cash offer. It's ready to close in six days. They have full rights to do that, in my opinion, because you have not delivered the loan commitment period. Right. Loan commitment in the, in the time period that you stipulated. If you do deliver the loan commitment, that's great. You've now voided the seller's right to cancel, but you've also voided your right to cancel based upon financing contingency. So what you t t say to your buyer is, how much do you trust your lender, yeah. right? Is your lender's word worth what they say? And the reality is, okay, well, what's gonna happen to my five grand? I don't know, go talk to your lender. All right, it's not me, you're the one that chose the lender and here's the one you're using, so if they can close it, great. If they can't, you need to have a discussion with them. 
All right, and so, yes, so the answer is, is, is there. And then the other answer is the seven day window. We talked about this at length as well. So the class is great because we talk about the window. There's the window between loan commitment deadline and closing date. Okay, let's say it's a 60 day closing with a 45 day loan contingency, right? At 45 days, our financing, we didn't deliver the commitment. We've got between 45 days and 53 days, right? Okay, because that's seven days prior to closing to cancel that contract if we're not going to get this done. All right, that's what the buyer can do. I can cancel this contract if I can't get it done. After day 53, all right, I got, I got a three letter acronym for you S O L. Okay? <laughs> Because your financing contingency goes away seven days prior to closing. I used to, remember what we talked about this for the last couple months, that on my deathbed, Bob, what's your greatest regret? That I couldn't get more agents to understand <laughs> that the financing contingency disappears seven days prior to closing. All right. Because the, the, my agents didn't read the contract. All right, Cherry. Because our best line of defense is kind of what I've been doing. I just wondered if David had any better ideas, but. If I get to that 45 days and we don't have a clear to close, I like to just be honest and let all parties know. And I ask the seller for an extension of contract saying, you know, we've got the appraisal, we've got this, we've got that. We need another 10 days. For what though? Need it for 10 days for closing? No, we extend the loan commitment. Thank you very much. The closing date. Everybody hear that clearly. Addendum the contract, we extend the loan commitment date and the uh, buyer and seller both agree to extend the contract. Okay. Sometimes the seller will ask for more escrow, which I'm fine with usually. But you know, and in good faith, sometimes we offer another five hundred dollars. Right. In good faith to get them to extend. Sure. Please do both. Is there any other better way, David, or is that? Well, I think the most important thing is the, the, the point that Bob raised, and that is people lapse into we're going we're gonna to extend the closing date, and they just kind of cavalierly think that that and you know, everything else kind of rolls with that. But you want to be very specific about what it is that you're extending. You're extending the financing contingency period, and just go ahead and spell it out that, that if for some reason the buyer does not receive you know, whatever it is that you want to name as far as a loan commitment or a clear whatever it is you want. If that's not received, then the buyer has the uh, has the right to receive and shall receive the uh, the deposit. So just spell out right. spell out what it is you're doing, but be very specific about. And when anybody uses the word extend, the first question is in your mind is what are what are we extending? Put it put it in the addendum. You know, make sure you spell it out. Do do not do not lapse into we're we're extending the closing date because that really doesn't. A lot of times that doesn't get you what you what you really need. All, all extending the closing, and 80% of the time when agents extend a contract, they extend only the closing date, okay? And, and they're thinking that, and all they've bought themselves, they've extended that seven days prior to closing, but all they've ex extended is the window. Because you know the seller can still cancel the contract because it says either party may cancel in the window. And all you did was extend the window without extending the, co the, the financing contingency date, which is critical. Jim. Uh, one thing that I teach in the class, uh, that I, when I teach the contract class, is to read the, continue reading paragraph eight all the way down to the bottom. Because when you get to the next section, really, <laughs> really delivering the financing or the, the loan commitment is a good thing. Because you want to deliver that if you're going to get it. Because there is a, in the, when you, Go on and read it. One of the, I'm looking at the paragraph now, it basically says, if the buyer delivers this loan commitment and the contract therein does not close, then uh, you know, due, due to specific reasons, um, the deposit shall be paid to the seller unless it's because of the seller's default. Property related conditions of the loan commitment have not been met. That's the one where when you get a loan commitment and you have conditions to it, if those conditions don't get met, then your seller's still protect or your buyer's still protected. They'll get their deposit back. Um, and then uh, there's an appraisal one, and then also if the the, the actual lender fails, like the actual bank goes yeah, they're, they're you know you call them and it's no, you can't do it. Yeah, yeah. the numbers disconnect. <laughs> whoa, whoa, we're supposed to close tomorrow. What so happened? Don't be afraid to deliver it. You need to deliver it when you get it, but it's, it has to be the buyer's decision to deliver it, and you have to talk to them about it and have that conversation with them because then. You, you'd let them know that that's going to make them waive their financing contingency at that point by delivering it. So it's just one thing I like to point okay, out. It's because your buyers are clueless on the contract, even though they signed it. You know why they're clueless? Because you're clueless. All right? <laughs> Which keeps me up at night. All right? I'm just kidding. All right, Chris. 
Well, on that, you're looking at it from the seller side pretty much on this thing, but from the buyer side, yep. that you have to, as the agent, request that loan commitment from the lender. Correct. So at this other company, yeah. there's a form that gets sent out right, right. away requesting that information from the lender, even though it could be a month and a half before they're going to do right. it. It's part of our paperwork. Right. You've got to have that letter going out that you asked for that. So you kind of took care of your obligation as a realtor, although... Yeah, you know what? It, the, the key would be is that at that point, it's we teach it's a, it's, it's a come to Jesus moment with your buyer, right? Hey, look, we're getting near the end here, and we've got a decision to make. Here are options A, B, and C. All right, here's, here, here's what we can do. And I would document this. You all have cameras video tape the whole thing, all right? We've had, you, you talk about, you, we laugh until, you know, like, oh, Bob, why is so much paperwork? And like, oh, my God, I just got a lawsuit. And boy, I'm glad we have that paperwork, right? And so it's, you have to have that, that discussion with your buyer. Here are our options. The lender has not delivered a commitment, all right? He says he can get us one tomorrow. That's great. If we get it and we deliver it, here's what happens. Let's read it together. You ready? Okay. After delivering this, unless it doesn't close due to you know property related conditions, and so there are clear, you know, perfectly clear things in the con. The contract is not that hard to understand if you, if you just read it. All right, and that's why in the, on the class when we teach it, we break it down and we talk about the window and what happens when we have the window and what are the ramifications if we do it and who do we represent and so on and so forth. So um, there's some good stuff. on. If you can find the YouTube channel, wherever that might be, all right, there's some good stuff in there because we just did one on agency, all right. We just did one on agency. We did one on the FHA VA addendum, and we did, we've done one now on, the, on paragraph eight, uh, quite lengthy. We were doing these as breakout sessions before the 100Ks. So, all right? All right. And David's always available, but he charges when he's not here. So take advantage of your time when he's here, because he, you know. Well, I, I think we ought to we ought to share with everybody that uh, there are a lot of ladies in here that heard that men have a problem with commitment. Does doesn't apply in this situation. It, it, right? not, we're not talking about that. All right, very good. All right, all right. Some men uh, some men loan officers have a problem with commitment, though, right? They 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 won't uh, give you the loan commitment and, and and get that done. So, all right, all right, I will be fast. I'm gonna first of all a couple things. Um, Words of note, uh, tonight at the Hampton Inn, Clearwater, 7 o'clock, we've already wrapped up 100K, and so because of that, November's a good time. We usually like to teach an incorporating class, so we'll be covering why and how and the reasons behind, how much it costs, when's the break-even point of incorporating. You ever seen people have LLC, PA, PLLC behind their, their uh, license name? There's a reason behind that. We're going to cover that tonight, 7 o'clock. Um, we still have plenty of room, so feel free to drop in if you haven't registered. We're also teaching it tomorrow at 10 a.m. at the Hampton Inn on uh, Olmerton Road in Clearwater, across from the St. Pete Clearwater Airport, not far from Pro, if you're familiar with what that is. Uh, we'll be teaching it there. Next week, uh, on Thursday, I'll be teaching it at um, Sile Insurance in Orlando. All right, so if you've got any Orlando agents that you know, um, uh, let them know. And then at the end of the month, I think on the 29th, we're doing it in Jacksonville. So. Um, good time to, to think about doing it. If you're not, how many here incorporated? Okay, good, you should be, all right. If you aren't taking full advantage of it, maybe you want to come to so you remember why you did incorporate. I don't know, someone told me to. Well, great, I was doing nothing, costing you money, all right, because it costs money to incorporate and it costs money to maintain that corporation, but there's a, you better see a benefit from it, right? And so we'll show you where the benefit is if you, if you come to any of those sessions, we'd love to have you. Um, and then a couple quick things, just want to cover real fast. I got to uh, thinking last night, here's a good word. Jeanette dropped a word on me the other day, all right? And uh, I had to think about it a little longer. I'm gonna, give me a second while I find this PowerPoint real fast. I don't have a flash drive with Wonder Woman on it, so it's buried in here somewhere. All right. Okay, this is some, some wrap, wrap up stuff. How many of you guys have been to 100K? Okay, perfect. If you, if you haven't recently, all right, we study a lot the Michael Mayer book, The Seven Levels of Communication, right? And which is an awesome book. And in that, basically it can be wrapped up in this, all right? He talks about the generosity generation and the generosity cycle, okay? 
all right? You start by being generous. That is reciprocated by the people we, we are generous to. What happens is, what most real estate, traditional real estate teaches you to do, go ask for referrals, go ask for referrals, because referrals are your lifeblood, right? I get that, that's all, that's fine and good. Problem is, you haven't earned the right to ask for the referral. So what we teach is go be generous first, and when you give this massive generosity, all right, psychologically, they're obligated. They're like, wow, that was really cool, all right? Becky, I appreciate that, that was awesome, thanks for doing that for me, I owe you one, right? And what they owe you one is a reciprocation of your generosity, which in our case means referrals, right? And so we're generous first, then the, the, they reciprocate, we get the referrals, if, we're, if we get enough referrals, we become profitable. If we're profitable enough, we become prosperous, and the more prosperous we are, it allows us to be even more generous, and the whole cycle starts all over again, all right? And so it's a lot better way to go through life. It's, 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 it's you know what, instead, stop, period, asking, period, for, period, referrals, period, all right? If you end every sentence, you have a dialogue with anybody out there, and by the way, you or anybody you know looking to buy or sell real estate, I'm your guy, all right? And if you can somehow find a way to get that little light that glings off your tooth, all right, there, okay? All right, it's not gonna happen, right? Okay, so you gotta go earn the right to, to get there. You're gonna attract what you are, remember that? Okay, these are some final thoughts that we kinda close with. I mean, we talk about changing ourselves a lot in 100K, because we wanna start attracting business and stop chasing it, but in order to attract business, you have to be attractive, right? And I'm not talk, talking physically, even though that's part of it. You have to be emotionally, spiritually, uh, financially, all these, nobody wants to be in business with a loser, right? And I'm just telling you, so you got to be attractive. So you got to start to doing that. Now you got to remember that you're going to attract who you are. You know, sometimes I'll run into people like, oh man, Bob, everybody, I, it just seems like there are so many jerks out there. Okay. <laughs> you attract what you are and everybody around you is a jerk. <laughs> All right, if A equals B, all right, go back to my math, and B equals C, this is called a commutative property real, of, of uh, mathematics. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C, all right? If everybody you're running is jerk, then you might want to change who you are, all right? Earn the right to be heard. This is what we talk about, that we don't just ask for referrals, and they shouldn't give you a referral because you passed a stinking test, right? Oh, I passed my real estate test. Okay, congratulations, all right? You, <laughs> big flipping deal, right? What have you done for me lately? It's the answer is you got to go earn the right to be heard. We joke in the class about um, churches. Good churches do this, all right? People don't attract people to any religion by standing behind the goalposts while they're kicking an extra point that says John 3.16 tattooed on their, you know, big hairy chest, all right? Doesn't get it. You know what attracts people to any type of religion? Are churches that do things that they earn the right to be heard. Right, a, a church up in Tennessee where we are, they, huge church, but they've got probably 80 dentists. So 10,000 people, you're gonna have 80 dentists, right? So what they do is they put this mobile dental lab together. They drive around, they go to the inner city, they pull this mobile dental lab, and hey, let's fix your teeth for free. Here we go, come on, All right? Now while they're there, hey, by the way, is them I could pray with you about, you know, that kind of stuff? Now you've earned the right to be heard. You see the difference? It's a difference in going out and saying, standing on a soapbox, beating your chest and saying, you know, repent now or go to hell. Okay, it's not, you haven't earned the right to be heard, all right? So, and we need to do the same thing, all right? That we need to be there and be the type of person that's earned the right to be heard. We read uh, Seven Habits, or not, we read, uh, help me out, Greatest Salesman in the World, and in there we study the scrolls, and one of the scrolls is early, create new habits and become their, sa their slave. Why people don't do things in real estate, I, I loved it when Tracy last time, by the way, she talked about Real Estate 101, Remember that? It means 100 won't and one will. All right, that's real estate 101. Is that agents know what to do, they just don't do. Right, so how do we get to that point where we're gonna do it? It's gonna take self-discipline. Take action now, don't wait. All right, stop waiting around to just, you know, you get everything perfect. Remember George Patton? Okay, a good plan executed today is far better than a perfect plan never executed. All right, we keep waiting till, oh, just wait. Okay, I, as soon as I'm, I'll be ready next month. Next month, next month, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. By the way, November and December, Chris, you remember, it's funny because Chris is here. By the way, Chris Meyer, do you remember the time when we were doing a caravan and I got pulled over and it was, okay. okay. So Chris, we were, going, we were at a Prudential office together. And was it Prudential at the time? Okay, it was. So we're at Prudential and uh, we're going to, uh, 
Um, Chris is, was the first uh, uh, listing on our uh, caravan. So Chris was riding shotgun with me and I was driving, right? And I was going down Lake St. George. I remember like it was yesterday. We're going down Lake St. George, came over the hill and this cop was there. And, and, and so he pulled us over and Chris was like, oh no, I got to go open the house. And so Chris starts pulling up, opens his door and get back in the car. And, and so, <laughs> it was fun. so we finally got, I got the ticket, but I let Chris go get in there. I said, oh, can he at least hop in with somebody else? So it's kind of funny. We remember that. But. Same, same prudential office, right? Mandated office meetings every week. And I remember going in. You guys have heard me tell the story. This is the, now, Chris wasn't the, the two guys. All right, there were these two guys, older. I can't remember their names anymore. But they were just, I don't think they ever sold anything. All right, they're, they're the two guys that are in the, we talk about the Muppet Show. Remember the two guys in the Muppet Show? <laughs> they had to sit up in the balcony and they're, rah, 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 I just kind of, you know, always causing problems with people. And so I was selling, you know, just the heck out of these $62,000 homes. I was working with first-time home buyers, sitting in these bank-owned open houses houses and just and trust me I sold a lot of them because you sell sixty two thousand home dollar homes you better sell a lot of them right and so they'd oh McDougal just sell another sixty thousand dollar home oh, you know I said yeah well no not one but four this week because I have to right and like I said they just sat around drinking coffee well I remember the first uh, time came in all right it was in November and they were like oh yeah it was uh, my, maybe my first year second year maybe in real estate all right but oh yeah <sighs> It's over. It's like, what? And they said, oh, yeah, nobody buys after Thanksgiving. <laughs> no, it's, forget, you know, nobody buys. So, well, nobody buys from you ever, all right? But that's okay. And, you know, and, but nobody buys <laughs> in Thanksgiving. It doesn't matter. Valentine's, it doesn't matter what, you know. But you know, I said, okay, well, what do you mean? Well, everybody shuts it down. Their minds on other things. They got things going on. And I literally have physically put my fingers in my ears. And they said, what are you doing? I said, I can't afford to hear it. You know what? And you know what I decided that moment? Realtors, I already knew this. I knew realtors are lazy. I had no competition. All right, look at the numbers. How many, 1.3 million realtors in the United States now? All right, at any given time, in any given year, 20% of them will have zero closings this year. All right, so they're obviously not your competition. Right, so there is no real competition because the facts are only about 20% do all the work, right? And so with that in mind, I said, I already knew they were lazy. Now they're gonna get lazier, all right, if they all think like these guys. So I dug my heels in. Now this is back, again, I'm selling $62,000 homes. Back when we had a $25,000 uh, uh, property tax uh, homestead exemption, right? You just, they take 20, and I was selling houses that had like assessed values of 26,000. Okay, <laughs> it was awesome, all right? So my big selling point was, hey, look, let's close by the end of the year so we can get you get your no, no property taxes because if we get lot, homestead locked in, all right, we can get zero property taxes. And I, remember, and I just dug my heels in. And I sold like seven homes between, and closed between Thanksgiving and the end of December. I just because I said I was going to make it happen and get it done because everybody else was like not answering their phone. Oh, I can't be a client because no one buys after Thanksgiving, right? <laughs> All right, well, thank you. I'll answer my phone and go get it done. So don't buy into this, oh, it's time to retrench and stuff. Let's just, I'm going to spend this time and focus on my goals. Great. You're going to focus on your goals. You're going to set your goals in January and never look at them again until next November when you said, oh, it's time to focus on my goals. All right? Go do something and make it happen and do, take action now. All right, learn to talk to yourself in a new way. We talk about this a lot, right? That if we're all built with some mindsets that are, and we all come to the table with some things that are built into us, we've been told things as we've grown up, everything that just kind of reflects back, all right? We're gonna have to learn to stop listening to that, all right, and start listening to new. And matter of fact, what happens, the old keeps coming back, right? So I gotta fill it up, I gotta take care of, gotta get rid of the old and fill it with new, all right? And that's what we're gonna continue to do. And weed yourself daily. Now, again, if I teach this ever in, we're only in Florida, but if I ever teach this in Colorado, that will take a whole new meaning. I get that, all right? Okay? All right. But let, let me tell you the story behind weed yourself. Yeah, that's not what I'm talking about. Like, right on, dude. Here we go. Okay. No. Okay, here's the story behind weed yourself daily. I've now moved, but at my old house, all right, in Brentwood, Tennessee, uh, I had two neighbors across the street. There actually was one in between. So I had my neighbor Bill and a neighbor uh, Bob, Robert, okay? And Bill was awesome. Great guy, best neighbor you could ever have. One of those guys where, you know, had 
uh, every tool you ever want to borrow, retired, you know, worked for the same company for 52 years, and just, you know, that greatest generation, you know, served in World War II, that kind of just, that perfect neighbor, right? But Bill always had a really nice lawn, and outside by our mailboxes, everybody had these, like, kind of quarter circles of, of uh, flowers or whatever around your mailbox, right? I would watch. I remember one day it hit me all of a sudden. I was out, I was in my office and I was looking down and I saw, and Bill went out to go check his mail. So he gets his mail and he reaches down, he looks around, okay, and he, I saw him just twice. He just kind of reached down, one, two, all right? He weeded his whole thing, all right, in about seven seconds with his forefinger and his thumb. You know why? Because he did it every day, all right? Now, Robert, great guy, two doors over. Okay, Robert, once a year when his wife would finally hound him enough, would go out and get like jackhammers and backhoes out to get the weeds out of his thing because they had grown to tree size, right? And I'm hearing all this swearing going on across the street and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, oh, Robert must be weeding his thing again, right? Okay, so get out there and he finally get it all cleaned up and he's all happy and he's thinking about taking like a day and a half, right? Gets it all done and then he'd ignore it for another year until his wife would hound him again and he'd finally get to that. Why not weed with this? And that's the whole premise behind Weed Ourselves Daily. We're gonna take a look at what we're doing and make small tweaks along the way, right? I'm gonna, I got seven, three minutes, I'm gonna show you this other, we've shown this slide and it's one of my favorite slides. Let's go, previous, no, it's not, oh, I can go back, huh? Look at that, amazing what, Maybe it's the next one. Oh, that was it. Nope. Drink water, 64 ounces of water a day. What else, where is it? All right, how about this method? Oh, you know, I don't have it on the slide. Okay, that's why. Trip to the moon, remember our trip to the moon? All right, we look at a trip to the moon and it looks like a nice smooth parabola, right? Oh, someone shot a rocket and we go from the earth and we land on the moon. Pretty cool, huh? Well, the reality is, if we, and I show this box, if we blow up a box of that trip and took a five second snapshot of that trip and blew it up, magnified it like a thousand times, it looks like this, right? And the reason is because they've got to constantly monitor their progress. They've got to say, oh, we're off, uh, would you, let me make it, because they know that they can't wait a day and a half before they check their progress the first time because now they're uncorrectable. They don't have enough fuel to correct enough. They know that they've got to make a lot of series of small tweaks along the way that will get them to where they want to go. That's what I'm going to encourage you guys to do. That's part of weeding yourself daily is that I'm going to stay, spend some time. We teach once a week at a bare minimum, right? We call it the Sunday night ritual. Once a week, just take a look and say, hey, where am I? And where did I want to be last week? Did I do it? Oh, you know what? I was supposed to make 15 calls to my sphere, and I made 12. All right, so I'm a, I wasn't great at math, but I can do this much. So if I wanted to, I was supposed to do 15 the next week, and I only did 12 last week, so I'm off by three. I add three, and then now I do 18 this week. That's a small tweak. If I wait till June 30th and do my half year, mid year check, all right, and I'm supposed to have made how many calls? And 450 calls by then, and I've made eight, right? Like, oh, forget it. All right, life's over. Let me go back to tending bar. Let me go back to cutting hair. Let me go back to doing whatever I was doing before. This real estate doesn't work. All right, no, real estate works. You just didn't work. Right? And so we got to make the small tweaks along the way. So consistently, weed yourself daily. That means I'm just going to go and I'm going to just commit yourself to be Bill. All right? Think about the pinchers. I can weed my whole thing in seven seconds if I do it every day. It takes me a day and a half with a backhoe if I wait till once a year. All right? Fair enough? And I took too much of your time. Tonight we're good. Tomorrow, if you want to come to the incorporating seminar, don't forget December 6th. We'll be sending out an email where they can register, right? Um, for our uh, uh, Christmas slash holiday party. Um, our vendors will be there. And we have two open house baskets at the West, at the Lima office. Yep. If anyone's doing an open house this weekend or next weekend, 
Come by and pick it up and use it to raffle off. Courtesy of Sile Insurance. Yeah, yep. Two baskets there for someone who wants to Oh, one last thing. Keep an ear open. I'm going to start wandering around the offices, all right? And when I say wander around the offices, you know, what I'm getting is uh, as we're opening our, our Orlando locations, uh, we're doing these, uh, our 100Ks aren't as big there. So we have our 100Ks around a conference table. So it's kind of nice, actually. There's pluses and minuses. And when we're doing stuff like we just did over paragraph eight, all right, we're going to be doing some forums where, hey, you know what? I'm going to be at the West, uh, West Chase office. I'll be at the Wesley Chapel office. I'll be at the Seminole office. I'll be at the uh, Newport Ritchie office. Just, hey, you know what? Go for an hour. We're going to have some open forums, more of a mastermind. We're going to have a topic. Hey, let's start the topic here. But just like everything else we do, it wanders quickly, and that's okay. But there'll be some times that if you want to jump in and do that, um, just because it's good to get around and dialogue with other people and really kind of hash some of this stuff out. Fair enough? Got any questions, let me know. Remember, the best way to ever reach me is how? Email. Why is that? Go to the gym. That's right. So I can forward it to Jim. Exactly. I can just forward it. <laughs> you know the answer. Jim knows the answer. Because if you email me, I can just hit the forward button, and it's all off to Jim, and he'll take care of it and get things done. All right. If you guys have any questions, let us know, Sirius. And I'll say thanks for showing up. Have a great Thanksgiving if I don't talk to you before, and we'll see you next uh, time. All right. Thanks.